today I'm going to answer a question about my video on small signal amplifiers. The question is by the viewer Dina D or Dina D. I hope I didn't mangle your name too badly. I apologize if I did. But the question was a little bit long, but I think I can boil it down into two parts. The first part of the question is, when we apply alternating current to the input of a common emitter amplifier, what happens when the emitter is positive and the base is negative? So here's our classic common emitter amplifier model, and I'm going to just remove the generator here for a moment just so we have something open there to apply some voltage to. And of course when this voltage is positive to negative, we have current flowing in this direction in the base circuit, and we have the transistor here acting like the load of the circuit in that uh, context, and so the current is flowing into the load and we have a higher voltage where it flows in and a lower voltage where it comes out. And we note them by positive and negative. So the higher voltage is positive and the lower voltage is negative. So as we apply alternating current, the positive half of the cycle, we are flowing current in this direction, positive to negative. The transistor is turned on and we get current into the collector and we get an output on the collector of the circuit. Now, of course, alternating current, we're going to reverse the polarity and the direction. So there's the negative half of the cycle. The current is going to be trying to flow in the opposite direction. But what's going to happen? Of course, now uh, the, the voltage is higher where the current goes in and lower where it goes out. So the higher is shown as positive, the lower is shown as negative. And Negative voltage is not the opposite of positive voltage. It's simply a lower voltage. So this voltage is higher, that voltage is lower. So what happens when we do that with a bipolar junction transistor? Well, it's reverse biased and therefore the transistor is turned off. We don't want to exceed approximately 5 volts when we do this because when we do the base to emitter junction of a bipolar transistor acts like a Zener diode. So it breaks down at approximately 5 volts. So we don't want to exceed that, and I don't know what's going to happen if we do to the whole circuit, but it will break down and we will get current flow that's undesirable. But as long as we stay below 5 volts, the transistor is simply turned off and there's no current flow in any direction. So that's a fairly simple answer to the question. So alternating current, when we apply it positive to negative, let's get this out of here for a second so we only have those two symbols, positive to negative, current flows through the transistor, it turns on and we get current flow in the collector. But when we reverse that, negative to positive, the current attempts to flow in the opposite direction, but it can't because we have a reverse biased junction, so no current flows and the transistor is cut off and no current flows into or out of the collector. So the quick answer to that question is when this is positive compared to that it's just simply cut off and nothing happens. The second part of the question is, why do textbooks show a signal only being applied to the base and not to both the base and the emitter? Now think what the question is, is why do we see a signal like this AC signal being drawn next to the base, showing that we are applying that voltage to the base, but nothing to the emitter? Well, of course, we are applying voltages to both the base and the emitter because that's the nature of voltage. Voltage is a differential. We're always comparing one voltage to another. So we are putting one voltage on the base and a different voltage on the emitter. When the base voltage is higher and the emitter voltage is lower, then we have a current flowing from the base to the emitter and that turns on the transistor and something appropriate happens here. But if we reverse the polarity and apply a higher voltage to the emitter, and a lower voltage to the base, then the current attempts to flow in this direction and it is blocked by the reverse bias junction here and the transistor is turned off. So what's with that signal being applied to the base? It's a matter of how we conceptualize voltage when we are analyzing circuits. It just works a lot easier if we establish a reference point and then measure our voltages compared to that reference point. So where do we establish that reference? 
Well, we want to establish it at some place that's a logical place to establish it. In this case, the lowest voltage is right here. This voltage, let's say it's a 10 volt battery. So this voltage will be 10 volts higher than this voltage. I'm showing as a positive 10. Now, it wouldn't be appropriate to put a negative 10 because that would be 20 volts, but I'm just saying that this voltage is 10 volts higher than this voltage. So that's the lowest voltage in the circuit. Let's establish that as our reference, and we will call that zero volts. And we mainly do that by taking the black lead of our voltmeter or the ground lead of our oscilloscope and tying it to that point, and that will now be our zero volts. So the zero volts has to have two properties. One, it's a convenient place to establish as our zero voltage, and in this case, it's logical to do it as the lowest voltage in the circuit. And secondly, it has to be at such a place where if the current going through that point changes, the voltage doesn't change. Well, here we are tied to the negative side of the battery. So that has a very low impedance. And as current flows into that battery, as it changes, that voltage isn't going to change. So it's a perfectly good place to make our reference. So we've decided that is ground and that is our zero point. Now in some circuits it might be logical to have our zero at something higher than the lowest voltage and we talk about that in other videos but we'll leave this at this point here. So we've established that as zero and now when we look at voltages anywhere in the circuit, I'll use my red pin to represent my red lead of my voltmeter. Well if we go here we're going to see something 10 volts higher so we'll call that positive 10 volts. Let's make that look a little more readable there. So here is zero volts, here is positive 10 volts. As we go around the circuit, what's the voltage going to be here? Well, it depends on how much current is flowing through this resistor. If there's no current flowing through this resistor, then there's no difference in the voltage across it. So this will also be positive 10 volts. But as I take current through the resistor, this voltage will drop. As we know, as current goes through a resistor, the voltage across it gets bigger, so if we have current plus resistance, we get a bigger and bigger difference in voltage. This is tied to plus 10, so this voltage will have to go down. So it'll be something less than 10 volts. So this voltage is variable depending on how much current is flowing through the, this particular resistor. And when we come back to the base, well, what we tend to do is, you know, we just throw out some of this clutter here anyway. In fact, what we're going to do is eliminate the battery. Get rid of that for the moment. And we'll just draw a voltage point here. Now what have I done? I've simply established that that is positive 10 volts. This tells me that I'm connected to a voltage source such as a battery. So we know it's still there. But we've eliminated it by using the symbols of the circle with plus 10 next to it to represent 10 volts and down here we will get that out of the way so I can draw a ground symbol. We'll use the ground symbol to represent 0 volts. So we know that that's positive 10 volts and that's 0 volts. Why is it 0? Because that's where we put our black lead. Could we put our black lead up here? Yes. What would we measure here then? Minus 10 volts. So black lead there, red lead there. The voltmeter is going to measure 10 volts and the black leads at the higher voltage. The red lead is at the lower voltage, so it'll be a negative reading. So that would read negative 10 volts. That's going to get confusing. So we just don't do that. Switch them around, put the black lead here, the red lead there. Everything is now going to be a positive voltage compared to my now established zero volts. So now when I put alternating current across here. Let's put the two wires there. And sometimes this is positive and sometimes that's negative and they flip flop in polarity. Well, this might get a little confusing. So let's go take a look at uh, the way we look at alternating current in the same context we just talked about. When we first learn about alternating current, we look at it as two wires in which the voltage keeps changing polarity. So sometimes it's positive to negative, and then so many times per second it switches to where this is 
positive on the bottom and negative on the top. And this just keeps flipping back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, and that's alternating current, where the current flows this way, then it flows that way, and keeps going back and forth. So that's how we first learn about alternating current. But let's look at it in a different way. Let's start by putting a resistor here, just to give us some perspective. And what I want to do is establish a reference point here. Basically what we're going to do is we're going to put ourselves right here and see how the voltage looks if we just look at this wire from the vantage point of this wire. So to establish that, let's put the black lead of the voltmeter here. And we're going to use the red lead to see what this wire does in reference to where we're looking from right here. So let's put the red lead right here. So now let's put 10 volts across this. So we're going to put in 10 volts where this is positive and that's negative. So the current's going to flow in this direction. And of course, where the current enters the resistor, we're going to get a higher voltage. And where it exits, we're going to get a lower voltage. So higher voltage, lower voltage. Remember, negative is not the opposite of positive. A negative voltage is just a lower voltage than some other voltage that is a positive voltage. So positive, negative simply means higher and lower voltage. What's the actual voltage here and what's the actual voltage here? That's meaningless. One voltage is meaningless unless we compare it to another voltage. So that's exactly what we're doing here. We're going to compare this voltage always from the vantage point of this voltage. So here we are, ready to go. Red lead at the higher voltage, black lead at the lower voltage. So we're going to get a positive reading, difference of 10 volts. So the meter is going to read positive 10 volts. Now let's reverse the polarity. And erase all of these. Okay, now the current is flowing in this direction. And we still have 10 volts, but now the current is flowing in here and out here. So the voltage is higher where the current enters the resistor, lower where it exits. So we get a positive voltage or higher voltage there and lower voltage there. So the difference is 10 volts and the negative lead, or excuse me, the black lead, I don't like to call them positive and negative leads because sometimes we have the black lead at the positive voltage. So what happens if the black lead is at the higher voltage and the red lead is at the lower voltage? By design, the voltmeter gives us a negative reading. So the difference is still 10 volts but higher voltage at the black lead, lower voltage at the red lead, by design the meter gives us a negative reading. So that's negative 10 volts. And if we were on an oscilloscope, we would see something like this. Draw that a little better here. So we have positive 10 volts, negative 10 volts, and zero is somewhere in the middle. So what is negative 10 volts? Is it the opposite of positive 10? No, it's just a voltage that's 10 volts lower than some other place we've established as zero. So the zero is in the middle. So we would see, go from 10 volts to minus 10 volts on the oscilloscope. Now let's reverse this again. By reversing these, positive to negative. So what's going to happen? Current is entering here, exiting here. Voltage is higher where the current enters, lower where it exits. Higher voltage, lower voltage. Difference is 10 volts. So the meter, we have the black lead at the lower voltage, red lead at the higher voltage. It's going to, by design, give us a positive reading. And the oscilloscope is going to jump this back up to the higher voltage, right there. And let's reverse it one more time. Now the current's going the opposite direction. Higher voltage where the current enters, lower where it exits. So higher voltage, lower voltage, difference is still 10 volts. The black lead is at the higher voltage. Red lead is at the lower voltage. By design, the meter gives us a negative reading, negative 10 volts. So from this perspective, where we anchor our black lead 
at one of the voltages, we see the other voltage going positive, negative, positive, negative. And on the oscilloscope, we would see it going high to low to high to low. The high point is 10 volts above zero. The low voltage is 10 volts below zero. And where is zero? Well, of course, zero volts is always wherever we put the black lead. So that's another way to look at the alternating current. Instead of flip-flopping polarity on the two wires, we sit on this wire and watch what happens to this one. And we see, oh, if I sit here, and by sitting there, I'm calling that zero volts. It's our reference point. It's where we've decided to set our vantage point or our reference or our zero, whatever we want to call it. We see this voltage go up, down, up, down. And so now we have one wire that does not change and the other one that goes high voltage, low voltage, high voltage, low voltage. Once again, it's just a matter of perspective. If we step back and look at it from a distance, we see the voltages flip-flopping. But if we zoom into here and sit there, meaning that's our vantage point, that's our zero, and we watch this wire, we see it go positive, negative, positive, negative. So the new way of looking at our voltage is now, instead of two wires, put our load in here just for perspective, instead of two wires with a polarity that goes flip, flop, flip, flop, we're going to look at this as now zero volts. That's where we're going to put our black lead or the ground lead of our oscilloscope. And the other lead is going to go here. And what do we see there? A voltage that goes up and down, or in case of a sine wave, up and down and up and down. And we're going to see that in this case go positive, negative, positive, negative, over and over again. So now we have one wire that stays the same because that's our vantage point and the other wire is going above and below zero. It's the same exact thing as flip-flopping them. It's just the way we look at it. So back at this circuit, what we've established is that we visualize our alternating current not as two wires with flipping polarity, but as a single wire with a voltage that goes positive, negative, positive, negative with our zero volts at the mean. So it's a matter of how we visualize our alternating current that causes us to apply a signal to the base only. Of course, we really aren't because this voltage is constantly flipping back and forth. It's just the way we're measuring it, saying, OK, that's going to stay zero. It's always going to be zero. So that's going to force my other side to always go positive, negative, positive, negative. And that's why we show the signal only being applied to the base. It's just how we visualize it. So I hope that answered your question. And if it didn't, or if you have other questions, be sure to ask in the comments. I answer as many questions as I have time for, and sometimes when I can't answer a question, someone else will. If you found this video useful and informative, please give me a thumbs up down below. It really helps the channel. And subscribe because that not only informs you when I put new videos up, but it really helps the channel also. And a big thank you to my patrons at Patreon. I could not make these videos without your support. If you want to help me put these videos online and keep real vocational education free at vocademy.net, you can go to Patreon slash join slash vocademy and pledge your support. And again, a big thank you to my patrons who make this possible and a big thank you to everyone for watching.